One, two, three, four. All right, welcome back to Country and Cold Cans. I'm Logan sitting there with Trucker Andy and Kyle. Be sure to give us five stars and a great review on Spotify and Apple Podcast, and click subscribe on your way out. Uh, in the description of this podcast, there's a link that says click here to leave us a voicemail. Any questions, any comments, any music recommendations, we'd love to hear from you. We'll respond to you the next week. Also, check out the website Country and Cold Cans. That's A N D Country and Cold Cans.com for blog content and merch. All right, fellas, uh, topic today that we have been wanting to talk about for a while. Uh, we didn't do an official review because we kind of discovered the album like a year and a half late. Um, we had it came across our radar at the time, but we didn't really listen to it. And when we really got into it later on, but that is um, Treaty Oak Revival's LP that they had released a while back, No Vacancy. Um, Andy, I know that you had some, we've talked about them a little bit on the show, but you had some big words for him about how how excited you were yep most excited i've been since turnpike turnpike i can agree with that like there have been a lot of like like upstart bands that i've really liked but none that i've liked this much i don't know what it is it was just <clears throat> the subject matter the production that kind of like country rock but with a texas flair uh sound that this record has and then the angst and sad boy aspects of the <laughs> the lyricism was right up my alley. I, <clears throat> this is the hands down the most favorite record you two have ever introduced me to by a mile. Um sorry I am incredibly sick thanks COVID to my, Kyle. Yeah, thanks to my fiance going on a flight to Boston. Um, so I, I sound like shit, but um, yeah, we, me, Logan, you would attest to this. On our golf trip, we had a Treaty Oak Revival. <laughs> yeah. Because Andy, every literally, time, I, every time I got in Kyle's if, truck, it didn't matter if the song was halfway started, he'd restart it, but he always played, the first song yes, he played it was, a was Ode to Bourbon. It every single time we got in there. True to form revival. Yes, Ode to Bourbon, God, the best, oh my God. I have never vibed with a band as I have a Treaty of Revival. They are just not even stained. I, I said on the show. <laughs> now the, the new stained album I have been on repeat for three weeks now. Oh God, it's fantastic. It's not. It's not their best, but I'm just. I'm 15 year old Kyle again with the stained album. <laughs> it tickles all the nostalgia. But yeah, Treaty Oak is about the closest thing I'll get to it. Yeah, I don't know I, what it is, like, why this sound connect. Andy, what, what are your thoughts? Because, like, I don't know. It, this sound just, like, connected with us immediately. Um, good question, because um, I don't know. Well, I think it I think. Us. Go ahead. Go ahead, Andy. Some of it is that his voice really fits the sound. Maybe. And then it's smart songwriting too. Like there's some yes. really good hooks with some fleshed out verses. They do a fantastic job of not drowning out the vocals in a rock song. And he has a very rare talent of having a little bit of twang, but not, but also having a rock voice. There's a little bit of that twang on the end of, a lot of his verses that just it straddles that line perfectly and you're just like oh yes oh, I want more of it I would say that like Treaty Oak for me is like the perfect marriage of country and rock yes exactly it's like Where if you were baking a cake and you put the right amount of country and the right amount of rock and roll and it came out as the best damn cake you've got you've tasted in a long time that's what Treaty Oak is like yes. has been to me Especially this record. Yeah, they straddle the line so perfectly. And it, I mean, being in between, I think, is harder than being one or the other. A lot of times I would say it is because yeah. you're not one way yeah. enough or the other for that, for the fan base that tends to. Yeah. And, and, and then you also get the people are like, oh, you're just a poser or a wannabe, blah, blah, blah. And I'm hard pressed to find anybody who says they're a poser or a wannabe. They, yeah. they they fit in either category fantastically. 
they just seem cool too. Like their shows seem awesome. They've been on like the come up too on like who they've been opening for and where like I think mm-hmm. this Friday they're playing Billy Bob's in Texas. Yeah. I want new music from them so bad. I want in between so bad. Yeah, they have quite a um tour um lineup set up. And it's been two years roughly. November Roughly. twenty, yeah, November twenty twenty one, yeah. It's time, baby. Please bless us with the music. Please. They've been in the studio. Yeah, I'm sure I, it's I, coming. I'm sure it's there's probably something coming down the pike. I have seen some some tweets and whatnot, but yeah, God, do this. No vacancy record. I have not been ex- this excited for any band. I don't think ever. Other than probably staying getting back together, but um, I'm remind the the listeners that this is COVID Kyle talking. <laughs> yeah, it is, yes, COVID Kyle. Yeah, I have a massive headache and congestion. Thanks, Bailey. Uh, it's all your fault. Um, and I'm high on Benadryl, but truly, I have. Like I said, Logan, you can attest to it. We went on on a true revival for a whole week. Every time I drove anywhere, this is the only record I played. This is true. I was hook, line, and sinker from the get-go. I even tried yeah. to get him to play Postcard or Irish Goodbye at first when he goes, no, Ode to Bourbon. Ode, yeah, Ode to Bourbon, baby. And honestly, that's not even my favorite song by Trudy Oak. Um, just happens to be the one he plays the most and listens to the most <laughs> and talks about. <laughs> yeah, it is. But um, it's got everything on it is so good. And to put in perspective of how well they translate, I have played this in my work truck with numerous people who are new metal fans, they're hardcore country fans, they're rock fans. No complaints from any of them. Nobody has said, good. yeah, nobody said, uh, this shit's trash. Uh, give me something different. Yeah, because if they if they did say that, we tell them to check the smart part of their brain. <laughs> a lot of these people don't have smart parts of their brain, but <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like I said, it it's a bridge across all types of musical inter- uh, interest, and it's God, it's so fantastic. It, yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm I, can't, you, I can't I can't I can't wait cannot, for the album. Yeah, I can't. I can't pimp it out enough. I mean, they released Stay Tuned. Um, I'm sure that's a radio hit on their new album. Um, I don't know, but wasn't as high on Haunted House, though. Yeah, I wasn't quite as high on that one, but, you know, everything ain't going to be a home run. That's the way I yeah, look at it. that's true. You know. But <laughs> Everything on uh, No Vacancy is, though. Yeah, I can agree with that. So... All right, so fellas, uh, what we're doing this week is since we kind of missed the window for a proper review, we're gonna do we're gonna draft the track list, and so we're mm-hmm. bringing the wheel back and just I did uh, think Logan to be first. Andy, his name was put in first, so it ain't the whoever's name was first gets picked first. So let's see who gets first pick. Logan, I I know how this first round is gonna go. I know the first round if we don't play any games. Oh, would you look at that? Logan got first pick. <laughs> no shock there. <laughs> no surprise there. This is one of those things I just can't explain. Yeah, yeah. Surprise him. No, it's a hit. Trucker Andy. Mm. So, Kyle, it looks like you're bringing up the rear. Uh, I, I think we have very different tastes, so I'm I'm fine with that. First I pick, first Ode round. To I'm just <laughs> That's right. Take it. Take it. It's not even my favorite song. But yeah, um, <laughs> shocker. Logan got first pick. Per On usual. the rig wheel. Yeah, per usual. God. All right. So we'll we'll kick it off. First pick of he has the no vacancy. Com- he has no comment. 
He just doesn't talk about it anymore. Because, I mean, I have no explanation for it. It just happens. I can't hold, the, the wheel is just oh, the wheel yeah. hates you guys. I don't uh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Logan makes the wheel, but the wheel is just. It's a, it's a website. <laughs> Wheelofnames.com. Mm. That mm. Logan owns. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I wish I owned it. There's plenty of ads on that. <laughs> Anyways, revenue streams that are not available for us on our website aside. First pick, no vacancy track list, uh, Treaty Oak Revival. I'm going to go with Postcard. Shocker, right, Andy? Like, the hook to this song, the story in this song, it's literally, this song reminds me so much of an old 97 song. Um, But that, but it gets gets my blood pumping. I start fist pumping when it says, she said, uh, go to hell. I said, I'll send you a postcard. (laughs) And then it sounds like it's almost like, yeah, F you. And then it backs that up with uh, talking about how, saying how you're going to say you're sorry for all the things that you did this song is just like everything i love about that kind of marriage of uh country and rock especially when there's a hint of like the up-tempo style that you see with all countries since there's like a big punk influence postcard probably my favorite song of theirs that they've released first pick goes to that no doubt my first pick is gonna be a not shocker is one time thing the guitar rift is badass and the just the way he sings that chorus is just just so great on the ears to not sound weird of what is going through my brain what i want to say and just the fact that the story changes but keeps a similar enough chorus where it's like at first he's talking about how he wants to have a you know, the one time thing, just the hookup in the club or not really the club, it's more like a honky tonk bar. And then the next morning he changes his tune. He was too drunk to tell the truth. He doesn't want a one time thing. He does want sober you know, mind, does the body fine. That's right. Like fantastic song. That would have been on my list if postcard hadn't have been next. But this shows our vast differences in uh selection. My favorite my first pick, Tattooed Roses. It's a sad song and a happy melody. Perfect combo. It is the best song on the record by a mile. Please I do, debate me. Please I do debate love me. the lyricism in that song. I love everything about that song. I'm not going to act yes. like there's, it's just the lyrics, but yeah. Because yeah. he's talking about how the tattooed rose, roses cover up the name. Yep. And she, yeah. You know, yeah. Tattooed roses don't cover up the pain. They just cover up the shame and stain. Oh, God. Fantastic. Oh, love it. It's so good. And the bad decisions made. That's right. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're right. Testify. That's right. <laughs> testify, baby. Testify. Oh, it's the best song on the record by a mile. All right. After so Ode to Bourbon, I would skip immediately to this next <laughs> song. To this song. <laughs> Every time. So back to me, this is a tough one because I feel like one of these Andy eventually will get or Kyle might get, but I'm going to have to go with by a the narrowest of margins, Missed Call. This was the first song I ever heard of theirs. And Son of a bitch. I absolutely <laughs> love this song. It's a little bit slower than some of the more up-tempo stuff. It's a good change of pace with the sequencing on the record, but just the, the line that you're just sitting there and it goes, um, uh oh well i'm drunk as hell <laughs> like there's something about andy i could see us in college like fist pumping and like and everybody's like can we play some happy music <laughs> while playing missed call if we had if that had come out when we were back in school but yeah i loved everything about missed call damn it that was my second pick i love the uh the, i'm pretty done finding words to say to you after the beat and i've been waiting patiently but you're done and it's plain to see yeah i'm just tired of being just another missed call Damn. Oh, that one's really good. What do I want to go with? Ah, that's the, I'm going to take no vacancy. First song the guy ever writ, wrote. <laughs> First thing he ever <laughs> writ. <laughs> this is a legal document or writ now? <laughs> uh, I had this, oh, like the story behind the song is really good too. By him. Because it ties back into where, ties back into like him working in the oil fields and all that stuff, at the uh, hotels and stuff. 
the story behind the song is as good as the song itself, which I think also helps songs. Agree. You know what it is. We all know what it is. It's the Ode to Bourbon. <laughs> which I think is low-key Kyle's actual favorite song of theirs. No, it's, it's my second. And God, it's a song about vices. It's a song about troubles. It, it hints at the sad song. Once again, a little upbeat, a little rocky. Fan freaking fantastic. It and you know, I think we all struggle with our vices. And I, I love the line, tell little St. Peter, I just don't give a damn. And yeah, one day I'll pay for my sins, which I really enjoy because if you're seeing oh St. Peter, you know, you're at the pearly gates. So if you're not then, when are you ever going to pay for your sins? You know, I just, it's the, what's the word I'm looking for? It's the very personification of personal choice, if you will. Like you can tell St. Peter what you're going to do. Um, and Sunk's kind of a sad cry at the same time but it's also just he just he, I don't give a damn yeah, it's, def- I, yeah. it's definitely a sad cry in it because like the yeah. just the talking about the idea of numbing the pain and uh yeah it ain't helping the the depression and mental health and that he, he's been in but he's just gonna numb it with the bourbon yeah I mean it's it's a half of the first step of AA if you will <laughs> <laughs> and it's fantastic man because we all love emotional ass songs and Ode to Bourbon is just it's very raw and it is because tip top and the guitar solo oh, it's, it's like it's almost like sex <laughs> it's almost like sex <laughs> almost not quite didn't almost, see that uh, not quite. analogy coming yeah almost not quite though. this just keeps climbing it's fantastic <laughs> all right well after that on that note i guess it's back to me um i'm gonna go with and this kind of worked out perfectly for me to be since andy i i was trying to wager on which one andy might would pick and uh, i picked right to be able to get missed missed call in there but my next one is irish goodbye oh damn you love irish goodbye just using the phrase i mean as everybody knows you know just leaving without telling everybody goodbye and then he's in in his favorite bar then, you know, she comes in there. So he thinks he's just going to Irish goodbye and get out of there because it's better than trying to end up either a drunk mess or end up back with her in some capacity. <laughs> Leave like a drunk ghost in the night with another Irish goodbye. Uh, the Everything about that song from the production to the vocal to the lyricism right up my alley. That's my third pick. That's probably my least favorite sounding song on the album. Oh, really? I mean, like, obviously, they're all really, really great. But it's probably my least favorite sounding. Now it's the Battle of the Towns. And I think I'm going to go with Boomtown. Great song, this... but don't ever go to that casino in Biloxi. <laughs> Is that what it's called? <laughs> oh, there's a... It, dude, I literally... I literally thought that I was surrounded by nothing but meth heads when I went in there. Shout out, Taylor and, out, shout out Taylor and Spencer for conning me into going to that one. But yeah, don't ever go to them. They're good for that, yeah. This song sounds like a party song, but it's not. I just, I love the, uh, <laughs> I dip a drink and a smoke and I dabble in the Coke and I just took up smoking weed. <laughs> that cracks <laughs> me up every time. But that's the only ticket out of Boomtown Ooh. USA. This song, I don't know. It's just so dis- like it's sort of one of those deceptive songs that if you uh, you just casually listen to it, it sounds like a party song, but it's not. This is where you actually made the observation a while back, and I agree with you. This song is very similar to an old ninety seven song too. Excuse me. In that upbeat production, is kind of similar to old ninety sevens, but what? Old 97s always had a good way of having really sad songs played played fast and loud. 
I made that observation. When the when we first started listening to the record, yeah, that was your that was your take. I was gonna give you credit for it. I was wondering what I said. <laughs> I didn't know I had no idea what you were about to say. <laughs> I could have went into anything right then. Andy was like, huh? <laughs> so All right, Kyle, looks uh, like you have to pick between one song and the intro and outro. Oh yeah, it's um it's hometown. Um I think this is the the Americana genre, if you will, done correctly. A lot of people just trash their hometowns or where they're from, blah, blah, blah. It's backwards as this, it's blah, blah, it's terrible. And I I really appreciate the way they've done this. His hometown ain't hit no shit, but it ain't really much better nowhere else. Um, I I really respect this song a lot. Puts Kyle on his feels. It does really. Kyle still lives in his hometown, so that's why it does, he's like, yeah. "Fuck yeah, yeah." <laughs> I've ne- I've never gotten these feels. The two times <laughs> I've been in Hux's. Um, in fact, I wanted to leave immediately, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, leave immediately and go get a shot in the ass. <laughs> yeah, penicillin shot, penicillin. Uh, oh, have you been but, doing anything you haven't supposed to be? Ah, I went no, to Texas. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm just scared to touch something. But yeah, I I do I picked do up some second uh, second hand chlamydia. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> some second hand clap, if you will. Oh yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Thank you, Doc. Um, but I like the angle this song took. You know, we talk about it all the time where mainstream country is small town is the uh, end all be all it's the greatest thing in the world the more independent is it's the worst thing since like you know yeah of all time everybody's and, a narrow-minded racist yeah and it it really straddles that middle quite well which nope. i'm i'm so glad that andy picked boomtown because this true I, I got all three of my one two and three with no objections so it just shows are quite um, different views on the album. Logan took my number two. Well, yeah, well, Logan's terrible. So <laughs> <laughs> I knew that there was going to be at least one that me and Andy were going to have some crossover. But Andy, we still got two left, and I'll close it out with I'll take check in just because I think it's hilarious. Um, what are you guys a church man? <laughs> yeah, that's the one I wanted because <laughs> that's funny. But you ought to change your name. I don't know. I do like the checkout too, though. I don't care who you are or what you did out some po had dunk ass honky tonk last night. It's past your checkout and it's time for you. Your asses need to leave. Get the damn keys. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they did a fantastic job on the intro and outro. Because I don't love skits in songs. No. Yeah, no. And I don't love when they have intros and outros all the time. It, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This was an instance where it really does work because it's yeah, from title. the album art to the the uh, name of the record being No Vacancy to just being kind of like checking in and checking out uh, of a hotel room on the road. And then, you know, the, it fits the theme. Oh, yeah, check out the same way with the guy banging on the door. Get your ass up. And... <laughs> 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 They're on par with some co ed some skids. I mean, they re- they truly are. And I have no faults with the entire record. Not no, one. No, no faults or thoughts. No faults. Uh, no. Th- sorry, I'm, no faults. I can't. Your fight. sinus, your sinus accent yeah. right now is. Yeah, I'm sorry. Mm. Thanks, Bailey. Yeah, no, thanks, I can't. Bailey. I, yeah, I can't find a single fault with the entire record. There's. I mean, it's fantastic. Balmart's sick. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I love the legs. It's fantastic. <laughs> and he loves the album art. <laughs> yeah, I love the legs. Yeah. On the album art, it's, it slaps. It's so good, man. I'm surprised Kyle doesn't dislike it because they use the color blue, just like every other artist has used the color blue before them. I don't <laughs> get that reference, but okay, sure. Last week. Oh yeah, maybe, yeah. Was that last week or two weeks ago? Yeah, maybe last week. Okay, it was last week. Yeah. 
Yeah, fair enough, Andy. All right, that's fair criticism. We're all hypocrites in our own way. Yes, we are. I know I am. I'm a very large one. So, Logan, I want to ask you one last thing before we close this album out. How hurt were you at the the fact that uh, Taylor Swift did not show up at the absolute throttling? She didn't go? No, she didn't go. And it was, it pissed me the fuck off. The fact that Red Zone dedicated a probably a, a good three to four minute segment of the fact she was not there. I was like, I don't give a damn. I just want to watch football. I'm going to be honest. I care about that about on the same amount as I care about the NFL. That's fair, but I like I haven't watched a second of football this year and it's been awesome. NFL. We'll watch plenty of college. Yeah, sure. I love the NFL and I'm just like, I don't care about Taylor Swift. Stop showing me her and stop making know, it Andy. such a big deal. Andy, I'm just going to ask you who brought it up last episode last week. I wanted your thoughts. Kyle. Because Logan who brought is, it up this week, this episode. Logan, Logan is Logan's a Swifty. Who, who likes Taylor Swift? Kyle. Logan, Kyle. Logan, Kyle, Logan, Kyle Logan, loves Taylor Swift. Logan. I couldn't name you three Taylor Swift songs. Bet you could. I really don't think I could. Not with COVID brain, but I bet you could. I don't know if I could. I don't. I, I genuinely don't think I could. I don't remember shit, but that's probably yeah, why. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's true. <laughs> I got two. She did that one that was really popular on TikTok. It was part of her new album. Mine are really old though. Um, Andy's like old pop country Taylor. Teardrops on my guitar. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah, yeah. Okay, that's um, two. Yeah. Well, I couldn't name them, but yeah, that's two. Yeah. Uh, mean. That's one, right? That Taylor. Yeah, Swift. that is one. That's three. I yeah, got Logan, three. Logan is praise the Swifty. Praise Dale. He's the Swifty. I wouldn't say I'm not a Swifty. I don't call her mother. If you call her mother, I said it like I said last week. You're a loser. But her auntie instead. I just call her Taylor or T Swizzle. <laughs> <He's>, she's, <laughs> she's auntie. No, her fans are ridiculous. They're they cringe. They're approaching like the Beyonce Beyonce level of yeah. craziness. I mean, we didn't sit at the Turnpike show the other day and carry for forty five minutes after it ended, hoping they would play one more song. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because Logan was like, "Oh, it's because Carrie sucks," and. That's because we were we were in yeah. Gary. It was an outdoor venue. They couldn't do a. There was a time limit. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you've seen the videos of like her Swifty fans sitting there to like two hours after the show, and they're like, "She hasn't played this song yet." I'm like, oh my god, you people need a real life. I think you look up a lot of things about Taylor Swift. I see a lot of shit on reels. I don't an absurd amount of shit. <laughs> my on reels. reels don't look like that. Y'all reels are just what naked women. No <laughs> golf videos and and ridiculous stuff. Like <laughs> I saw one today of somebody. This is crazy. Someone jumping off a bridge and their chute doesn't open. Oh, oh that's terrifying. Snow. Mine are full of the people that throw rocks off bridges, and it's like for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a massive rock, and they throw it off a dam or a bridge. See, most of, most of my golf ones are not like really good shots. It's people doing dumb things on the golf course. Oh, running over each other with a with yeah. uh, golf cart yeah. and shit, yeah. That would have been me when I was like 22. <laughs> I've matured. Oh, that was me when I was probably 15, 16. That was definitely me. But except for Andy was actually doing it. Yeah, I never ran over anyone. Andy Not used to take golf clubs and hit <laughs> spray paint cans and watch them explode. Well, I was probably, I was probably, I think I was 15. They, like, when we went to play the back nine, the guy's like, we're closing. So, like, when you guys are done, just drop the carts off. And we were there by ourselves. I oh, just no. ghost ride oh, the no. cart in the woods, jumping through the uh, sand traps. Oh, no. Yeah, I got, I'm permanently banned from a course in Greenville, I think. Still this day. I got stuck about 20 yards in front of the uh, tee box. <laughs> Top my driver, drove down into the gully, and got it buried. <laughs> and 
I think I'm still banned. Y'all probably played in Brookfield. Y'all played Brookfield. Jordan's Never played there. Oh, uh, public course. Yeah, I think I'm. Oh, Andy banned. and I don't play public courses. Oh yeah, well, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You poor. You poor. Yeah, yeah I'm a, I have a poor. You're right. Andy, he, he as of as of currently right now, he's the he's the poor, but he's the only one who owns a house. I am a poor. Yes. Andy will soon own a house. So hey, man, that's his news to break, not yours. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, my man, Andy. Andy, no, he won't. He won't own a house. He's a poor. <laughs> He's a poor. He's a poor still. I am a poor. Yeah. I, get <laughs> I was like, everything I just said, I didn't say. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to walk it back like a political statement, you know? <laughs> That's not what I meant. Depends on the definition of owns is. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean that. But um, <laughs> well, <laughs> for this episode of Country and Cold Cans, be sure to leave us a voicemail. We'd love to hear from you. Give us five stars, a great review on Spotify and Apple Podcast. I'm Logan, sitting here with Trucker Andy and Kyle. Trucker Andy, who does not own a house. That's right, does not. Don't look him up. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Take care.